Welcome back to the greatest open world game ever made, Gollum. I can't think of another character from the Lord of the Rings franchise that deserved a game more besides arguably anyone. No, of course I'm talking about Red Dead Redemption 2. In this week's episode of Australian Man Makes Way Too Many Absent Father References, we will attempt to glitch outside the map and reach the exotic location of Guama. First, however, I must verbally assault the members of my gang. I part love you and I part hate you. Stop acting all superior. Camp idiot. How far are you fallen, Reverend? A Bill Williamson, which is a very manly name, knocks me out for being mean. I wake up several hours later in the mud. This game has really thought of everything. I ride my horse into town and notice a lad sleeping on a bench. He's drinking too, it's cringe, get a hobby. He asked me to help him. Arthur is like, yeah nah, yeah nah, yeah nah, yeah mate. He was evicted from his place of residence by law enforcement and he wants us to help get his possessions back. I ride to his place and start having a look around the property. Before he'd been evicted, he managed to conveniently leave several clearly placed letters and clues around such as this child's drawing. Yuck. I'd leave my kids too if they gave me this. The two men manage to sneak up on me via a cutscene but their guns jam and so we have ourselves a good old fashioned knife fight. I then remember I have guns and I pistol whip the first man and then execute the other. I now need to help this poor kind homeless man. I head down into his basement and see several chains which is a little suspicious. Maybe he's just a cast iron enthusiast. I then spot the ledger he desperately wants back and confirm that this man buys and sells humans. I ride to where he's now camping which is kind of wholesome. I love camping so much. The outdoor breeze, the warm crackling fire, but no I do brutally murder him. For the hate crimes but also for the child's drawing. Who frames that? Surprisingly my honour rating goes down which is pretty strange given I just defeated racism. A minute later as I'm riding back to camp I come across a clan meeting. This game is really throwing the hate crime scenarios at me and so I just start shooting. There's few things as satisfying as these random encounters. I ride into Rhodes and get myself a room at the local tavern and most importantly run myself a hot bath. It's pretty great, you get to choose which body parts to wash, but it could be better. We don't want Undead Nightmare 2, we just want a more advanced bath washing experience. Like the video if you want to see more Arthur bath content. I then buy some new drip and get a haircut. This is what a freshly bathed peak male form looks like. One of the gang members Mika wants me and so I ride over to where he's camping. He's like, oi cobba, let's go steal a wagon. 35% of this game is stealing carriages and wagons. The other 65% is me bathing Arthur, I mean hunting. My current apartment where I live in real life doesn't have a bath and I miss it. I like to ideally have at least one bath a month and now I can't have any. Pray for me. We steal the wagon and make some good money for the gang. Our next mission is to sell some stolen moonshine to one of the rich plantation families. We go and talk to the nice plantation lady and she's like rah rah rah. She wants us to give away this moonshine for free as a promotional campaign for our own product. This will also anger the rival plantation because it's actually their stolen moonshine. What a conniving hag. Hosea insists that the best way for us to run this operation is for Arthur to wear a little straw hat and puff on a small pipe while he pretends to be a simpleton. Seems wildly unnecessary as none of these people know who we are. I begin pouring shots at rapid pace. I bartended for years when I was at university and this one night I was running a 21st birthday party. This very mature looking girl kept smiling at me and I was like alright she's into me. Then she says something about school and I'm like wait how old are you and she comes clean and says she's been lying to me and she's actually 17. I then realised half the people at this function were underage and I'd been serving them all alcohol. Honestly I wasn't a great bartender but I dodged the bigger bullet. I was an hour away from becoming a Minecraft YouTuber. The rival plantation wasn't happy that we were giving away their stolen alcohol and so we kill dozens of them and flee the area. I reward myself with a big bowl of stew back at camp. I eat it directly over Jack to try and make Arthur throw his bowl on Jack's head but it sadly never lines up properly. I wake up with a new goal in mind. I want to travel to the Caribbean using a glitch I saw online. I proceed to travel to this exact spot on the map. Right on the edge there's a secret cave that you can explore. I head deep inside the cavern and start drinking whiskey like I was an alcoholic bat. I keep drinking until Arthur passes out completely and when I wake up I'm outside the map. Spank my ass and call me El Pelicano because I'm officially on the other side of the border. It's surprisingly detailed across the border. At first you can barely tell the difference but it eventually deteriorates. We'll be taking a long journey around the entire outside of the map. I run through the night. Days pass. If you're going to attempt this yourself it takes hours, I'm just editing most of it out using iMovie, the editing software of GigaChats. Suddenly NPC God conjures up a miracle and spawns horses for me. I haven't felt this blessed since I realised that girl from the 21st birthday function was underage. Eventually I reach the end of the nice scenery and from up here you can view the entire of New Austin which is pretty cool. It's at this moment an invisible sniper begins tagging me up. This is a measure Rockstar put in place to stop players exploring out of bounds. 
Apparently, the invisible sniper has collaborated with Suge Knight in the past. We die a miserable death, but put together a new plan. I will travel so far from the border of the map that the sniper won't even see me. On my way back to the cave, I notice a stranger. He's trying to hunt a grizzly bear, and I figure this is an important moment for him, and he should do it himself. If I ever have kids, I'm not helping them with anything. Breast milk, more like nepotism. The bear wins, and I end up losing honor points because I chose to believe in an NPC. Back to the cave, I drink myself to death, wake up outside the map, get another horse, and just like that, the mission continues. This time, however, I ride so far away that there isn't any scenery. The game looks so ugly out here. It looks like a Bethesda game. From up here, you can see the entire of Mexico, even though you never visited in the game. Pretty cool. I ride for a long time, changing through many different low resolution biomes. Eventually, I see the trees from Guama, and I know I'm getting close. Suddenly, the map gets all pretty and nice again. Rockstar is the only game developer that would have 10 out of 10 graphics in areas you're not even supposed to visit. After cantering for some time, I see something promising. A small tropical lizard. Sure enough, moments later, I emerge at Guama. It's a beautiful tropical paradise with sugarcane plantations as far as the eye can see. I then realize what's going on here. These people aren't being paid for their work. They must be volunteers and good on them for helping. The food crisis is no joke. You can't really explore this place when you visit it organically, so it's nice to be able to ride around freely. I proceed to let some goats out of their pen for a cheap laugh. I ride up and down the beaches on a small donkey I found. I explore the ruins of castles and I even find NPCs in cool places. It makes me think that Rockstar had more planned with Guama than we actually got. As I'm elegantly galloping along on my tiny donkey, I get domed by the cursed invisible sniper. The mission was a huge success and definitely a good use of my time. I go back to camp to sit down and relax. Tits McGee then strolls over and starts rudely saying that I'm not contributing enough to the gang funds. That's actually a fair shout, I've literally been in South America for in-game weeks. I walk over to the ledger to see what other gang members have been donating. Tilly put the entire camp on her back and got us a bat wing. Charles brought in an alligator tooth that will feed us for months, and my boy Sean found an empty bottle which I'm surprised he even bothered writing down. I've seen refugee camps with better work ethic. I make my way into town to get more ammunition and hear the sound of a young boy calling for help. He seems to be a captive of some kind. I walk inside the shop and ask the gunsmith to show me his cellar. Sure enough, there's a cute little twink in a sailor costume being held against his will. I pistol whip the dodgy malacca, but then I look around the room. The boy has a privacy curtain, a rocking horse, a little tub to wash in. He's obviously got access to chalk, and most importantly, he's got a father that's stuck around. Who am I to break up a family? I head over to the plantation we've been helping out, and Mustache McGee is like, you should steal some horses from our rival plantation. We agree, because apparently we do anything these guys tell us to. Just three lads riding through the meadows on horseback. It's not gay, we're cowboys. We arrive at the plantation and the guard is like, Oi big sauce, what are you doing here? John makes up a bunch of garbage about how we're investors. He reminds me of those annoying dickheads who thought they could make money from crypto a couple of years ago, aka me. We ride over and the stable hand is cleaning a saddle. God, I'd love to bend him over the saddle holder. I mean, I tie him up because I'm trying to get a better honor rating. We steal the horse and it's quite a spectacle. I actually stole a horse with some friends a few years ago. No, I'm kidding, I didn't do that. Horses suck. I'll tell you what I did steal though, a bunch of Snickers bars. Years ago, I was quite high and some mates and I were seeing a movie. On my way, I thought, why not treat ourselves to a tasty snack? So I walk into the shop, grab the waistband of my pants and proceed to tip an entire box of Snickers into my pants in plain sight. As I was walking out, they were falling out of my legs. It was red hot, but I fed the boys for days. We meet the horse buyers and sell the steeds for $750 for the gang. Where's Tits McGee now? Suddenly awfully quiet. I begin doing my chores as it's an easy way to get your honor rating up. It's strangely wholesome just being at camp, talking to the crew and doing chores. I don't think there's another game that's made me care about 20 different characters before. I head to the plantation we've been working with again and Saggy McGee is like, rah rah rah, can you please burn down my rival's tobacco crop? We agree. We sneak in at night and begin torching the place. The gang is doing a fantastic job of keeping a low profile. I guess we just really hate these guys along with affordable tobacco. And back at camp, our leader Dutch says we're going to make peace with our arch rival gang, the O'Driscolls. We ride through the rolling green hills on our white horses with our leather boots and chaps on as our hair effortlessly flails in the wind. There's nothing sus going on here. We're just on our way to meet other boys in the middle of nowhere where you couldn't even hear a moan. I mean a peace negotiation. Also, Dutch and I are both wearing red and our outfits clash. How embarrassing for both of us. I perch up on top of a hill so I can offer sniper support. 
and O'Driscoll immediately sneaks up on me, but not in the cute playful way, in the aggressive way. I wake up later hanging upside down in a basement as a prisoner. Their leader, Carmel Driscoll, is like, here comes the aeroplane, but Arthur doesn't go for it, as he's a fussy little eater. They leave me alone, which gives me enough time to swing and grab a knife to free myself. They shot and tortured me off camera, and Arthur is really milking it. I stealth kill the guards, jump on my horse, and ride away to safety. While I accidentally coat hanger Arthur on a low-hanging tree branch, which can't be great for the internal bleeding. I manage to reach camp, and then we skip ahead a few weeks. I don't want to wait for revenge, so I ride out to take care of this O'Driscoll problem myself. On my way, I notice a convict, and he's asking for help breaking his chains. I set the lad free, and he proceeds to do a cute little jig. He then tells me about a pig farm not far from here that has a lot of wealth. I find the farm and meet the two owners of the property. What a busty, thick, delicious snack. She's cute too. They invite me in for a hot meal. An adorable little dinner party, but the wife is taking a long time upstairs, so I'm sent up to check on her. I head upstairs and she says she won't be long. What great people. I mean, they do have human bones in their cupboard, but still, I sit down to enjoy my food. They end up getting me wildly intoxicated and I eventually pass out. I wake up hours later in a pit of human corpses. Some of those corpses looking kind of cute, I mean, I go back down to the house. I storm in the front door and the big girl is doing some kitchen prep. She squares up with me with a kitchen knife in hand, and so I beat her. Now I think you're only allowed to lay hands on women in three different scenarios. One, when they come at you with a kitchen knife. Two, when they threaten your family. And three, when they have a different opinion to you. A big man chases me outside with a knife, but Arthur can easily take several grievous blade wounds to the torso, he's not a hemophiliac. I headbutt my dinner host and then blow both of their unconscious bodies up with dynamite. I then find $2,000 in a secret stash and ride off into the wilderness on my steed. Just remember lads, cowboys never roll their joints, they tumble weed. If you enjoyed this video hit like, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, I love you.